السلام علیکم سعیدی وعلیکم السلام سعیدی what is futuwa and how can we hope to achieve any level of chivalry is it possible to change from a state of cowardice and irreverence to devotion and good character the tariqa is the is the path of futuwa and, and chivalry to have a, a noble existence like a, a knight from the heavens for men and women is is it's both both the gender to reach a, a state of maturity that's the whole tariqa means that if you follow the teachings follow the example follow all the lessons it is of a noble character that they describe means that it's not a, a Uh, law of the jungle and we're not the people of a jungle, we're the people of, uh, of a heavenly kingdom and inside the palace manners that the school has to be based on manners. If the school exists within the palace in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad the king. So that's the whole concept of tariqah to come and teach people to leave the barn and the jungle mentality and character now come back into the heavens and the kingdom. That's why we said, that kingdom come, thy will be done. If people are expecting God's kingdom it's not going to be a tailgate party. It's going to be what you see of Islam. You're going to see noble character, cleanly character, fasting and worshipness and submission to the will of God. That's the heavenly kingdom, it's, it's not a, a wild jungle people do what they want. So tariqahs, the spiritual paths come to teach those characteristics and to live a life of discipline with good characteristics because the, the foundation if the character is good then Allah can make everything to be sweetened. But if the amal is good and the character bad the person is operating at a deficit. and they can build a, a sense of arrogance and that's the danger. That's why this way is the example in the next month coming, the example of the people of the cave, run to the cave. And that that example of the cave is, is with the chivalrous character and how to, to have a, a noble character and, and uh, good manners inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum As Salaamu Alaykum Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan, there's many programs. that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh. Alaikum Sayyidi Walaikum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah. Sayyidi, when uh, Mawlana Jalaluddin Rumi was speak, uh, writing in his poetry, was he re relating everything to Allah or Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Each, each, each poetry different but I would imagine that all the mannerisms of awliya, although it may be veiled, is that their references to Sayyidina Muhammad and made to appear to be Allah because the mass of people may not understand it. But in the, in the depth of its understanding, in the tafsir of its understanding is in reference to the reality of the Muhammadan reality because how could anybody of a saintly nature circumvent the Prophet of Islam? Means that to think that you go above that station and begin to describe the Divine station without the Muhammadan reality is, is not something acceptable. So whether it's known or it's hidden within the wording then you'll see most of his quotes 
what the Siru are in the tariqah teachings. So we can teach something and people will find an exact quote from Sayyidina Jal- Jalaluddin Rumi Qaddasallahu Siru that is in reference to that teaching. So it was all these Muhammadan haqqaiqs but described in a way that the, the general mass of people would believe that to be about Allah We said in Halaj, on al haqq you have to understand the reality of what is haqq. And we even described it in the 11 principles of Mawlana Shah Naqshaban in the making of dhikr of Allah. So somebody would read that and say, oh I can do that, oh, Allah, 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 Allah. But no, that was a, those 11 principles were for the murshids and the guides of Naqshbandiya, Sul Aliyah. And they understood that that real zikr of Allah is only if you are in the dress of Muhammadun Rasul. In the, ha- in the dress of Muhammadun wasallam, then your zikr of Allah is a real zikr because you're in the Muhammadan dress. If you negate the Muhammadan dress, it's an imitated dhikr of Allah because you cannot compare yourself, your maqam, your light to, to the reality of Prophet So you have to be within the Muhammadan ocean, the Muhammadan soul, the Muhammadan reality then everything becomes real. So, an al-haqq, well Hayyu al-Qayyum is not a description of Allah. Because anything that has high has might, anything that has life has death. So these are a description only through marifah they would understand and know that. That these are the realities of a prophetic reality to reach. So that common people wouldn't understand that, common people say, Hayyu Qayyum and they mashallah they attribute it to Allah until one day they may traverse into realities and, and open up the realities to understand that, no Allah is, is not from an ocean of, of the living because Allah is beyond life and death. But this then has to be only, has to be taught. So this is a level of marifa and, and, and Gnosticism inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Nurjan. Walaykum As Salaam Can you please speak more on the reality of the 12 Imams and how is it different from the Shia understanding? The 12 Imams and we don't need to point out differences but in Sunni traditions Prophet described that there will be 12 Imams from my family. And so these Imams are accepted, the 12 names are accepted, they're in Medina, there are plaques with the 12 names and they're in the hadith of Prophet that there'll be 12. Now in the political system of Shiaism there's something different. That has nothing to do with the 12 Imams because the, the, the Imams and the teachings they were teaching then has to do with the Sunni belief and Sunni understandings. So Imam Ali Salam is Ahl Sunnah of Jama'ah, Imam Al Hasan Ali Salam is Ahl Sunnah of Jama'ah, Imam Al Husayn Ali Salam is Ahl Sunnah of Jama'ah. So they, they, they didn't change anything. But other communities like a tariqah that they adapted, adopted these Imams and made them a part of their aqidah and their belief and that becomes something different. So we don't want to get into their political system and political beliefs. But the love of the family of the Prophet and the 12 moons that they represent, the reality that they represent and the, the teachings of their heart that's important. So that's, that's what's important. So all the Nashbandi shaykhs accepted them, they referred to them and uh, alhamdulillah is uh, immense blessings for the nation and what they left behind for the nation and the light that they send as a support for the nation of Islam, Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi. 
Sayyidi, on social media, there are some spooky videos circulating that especially kids see on the so-called Gnostic book of Shamsul Marif, especially about jinns. What is this book? Uh, send me the link on helpme <laughs> nurmuhammad.com. Shamsul Marif is, 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 shouldn't be a spooky, it's a book on, on different knowledges and that shouldn't be in the hands of people and uh, yeah, the, nobody should be making taweezes and, and studying things they don't understand. That uh, like anything else, something is a blessing in the wrong hands can be very dangerous, so can cause a harm. That can be like medicine, medicine in the hands of a doctor can be dispersed as a healing. But if you enter into the pharmacy and start putting everything in your mouth, you can also be extremely dangerous for people. So in the hands of a doctor everything has a, a power and a reality. In the hands of a child it can be very dangerous or immature person. So tariqah is such that everything has to be an ijazah. Whatever taweezes are coming out these are the ijazahs of the shaykhs. So they have their ijazah from their shaykh and once they have the ijazah it's finished it, it'll be dispersed. Nobody can negate the ijazah at that time. Then the ijazah for all of the other practices. If you want to read Dalal Khirat, you ask the ijazah of the shaykh that I want to begin these practices, I want to begin the awrad, I want to begin these zikrs, these salawats so that you are under their nazar while reciting. So that you don't start to recite something out of your own imagination, reciting it too much, too little and then having again, it's a, exactly like a pharmacy. There's medicines, you start taking too much of this pill and you can make yourself very sick or very poisonous. So it has an effect on people, that's why the, the dealing with the shaykh is so important, not with the other people who dealt with the shaykh, oh the shaykh gave me for this for this, oh shaykh gave me that for this. That's like taking your medicine and start just putting like pills into different people's mouths. That the concept of going to the shaykh is that you email help me at nurmuhammad.com, ask for ijazah for the practices that you want to do and that you're under their nazar at that time. And that keeps that chain of command for people to understand they have to deal with the shaykh. Not I, I heard from so and so, so and so, so and so, recite this ten times. So that's exactly like passing medicines around, so, so nobody would do that in the physical world, take the pills from somebody else or they might but that, that you know that you won't live very long with that, especially with the wrong pills. <laughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Tullah What is the reality if you smell a strong smell of onions but no one has cut onions at the hajjud time in your home. Small, a strong smell of onions, yeah. Maybe there's like an onion <laughs> gins around you that had onion for dinner but <laughs> yeah it's just being sensitive to smells. So the, these the different uh, energies and the, the, the foods they like and the, the, the energies that they release and the fragrance they release, what can you do? So it's better just to do your practices, put some bukhur so that the fresh, fresh smells come and that to, to focus on the connection with awliyaullah and the muraqabah. So make sure that you're doing the muraqabah, reciting the madad out loud. So there's a madad, you recite the madad before you start any practices or any prayers, anything you want to do you recite the madad so that you're with the, the tajalli of the shaykhs under the nazar of the shaykhs and then you begin your practices inshaAllah and, and become more subtle. So anytime you're spiritually practicing and you become more subtle you're going to smell all sorts of different things, foul smells, good smells, medium level smells. But the more important aspect is that you're becoming subtle to different fragrances. So you know that, that's just a, a part of the, the subtlety of, of energy and, and the different openings inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Jazakallah for everything. 
If Dalal Khairat is played in a certain part of the house or on headphones, will the blessing spread throughout the vicinity? If you're playing on the headphones, the blessings will go for you, inshaAllah. And if we play it slightly audible so that the beings within the house can begin to hear it, so that that energy is spread throughout the house, inshaAllah. It's important to bring the energy into the house that it's audible within the house and the TV put it on the YouTube or put it on your, your, your wireless speakers in the house, play it within the house in a, in a low enough sound so it can be heard so that the spiritual beings, the jinn, the angels, all of them can hear it, come to, to be present with it and anything of a nefarious or bad energy hears it and wants to leave because they can't control their hearing. Once they hear it they begin to burn from praisings upon Prophet InshaAllah. Mm, as salaamu alaykum Ya Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa When I feel the attack of negativities at times I'm completely down and lost and keep crying on my failure. Can you please advise me what to do in such circumstances? When you feel the, the negativity you become saddened, yeah to feel it is one thing. So, so you feel energies because you're subtle but to actually do something negative and, and to, to have a negative and angry character and to have failed at a test, yes it's, it's a common and it's a good thing to feel down if, because you don't want to feel happy so you want to feel down and you want to feel disappointed means that you have remorse and that your heart is alive. Many people do bad things and they absolutely the heart is dead. So this is a good phase. And then to have a, a soft heart in which you even cry for what you did wrong again is even a better phase. And to make yourself and relieve yourself of that is that you give sadaqah, you give uh, and do good deeds and, and make your salawats and do anything that brings the blessings and hasanat. So that we said before in, in the simple equation of you went one down you need to come ten up. If it was five down and f five sins then you try to go and bring ten hasanats and, and ten points up. So keep track of the points system so that you're always in a positive category. That's why Prophet described for us a daily sadaqah, you give daily sadaqah so that good deeds, go out and do good things, make your salawats, do extraordinary. The salah and all the things that have been mandated is alhamdulillah Allah ordered it. But to sit and, and do extra worshipness, to pray sunnah prayers, to make salawats, make istighfar and, and zikrs have tremendous rewards inshaAllah and they counter the bad actions. It's only human that uh, we're going to do something bad. But it's what you're going to do after it that's important to make up for it so that again it goes up into the positive category in the positive field and that your energy is radiating positive by the end of the day. Don't let the day go and end in a negative category, Allah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. Uh, can you please elaborate a little bit more on the number nine? Elaborate more on the number nine? Allah is a very powerful number. <laughs> if one through nine, awwal akhir, that the highest number is number nine out of single digits, ten is a one and a zero. So nine has an invincible characteristic. I would recommend that you Google nine and the power of nine YouTube videos from mathematicians that study the sort of amazing nature of nine and uh, it, it's quite profound. And the reality of that is that nine represents the ultimate power and a kingdom and the king that everybody is stamped with an eight and a one because they serve the king and that anything that is multiplied, fused because multiplication is a reality of fana. When two multiplies with nine it becomes eighteen 
and eight in one is a nine. So when a two is in a fana with nine, it always renders itself back to nine. So anything and anyone making themselves ultimately into the fana of Prophet what happens? They will become Muhammadiyun and that we described the night before that well, what's happening in this reality? What Prophet will annihilate everything in his reality and resurrect them in a Muhammadan haqqaiq. So Sayyidina Musa had a level of Muhammadan haqqaiq, wanted to be nothing, wanted to see his Lord and then Allah sent an energy upon him immediately was brought down into a state of complete annihilation. At that time witnessed the Muhammadan haqqaiq and was brought back into baqa. Well now you're brought back into a new existence but this time your existence is Muhammadiyun. Your, your identity was annihilated and a Muhammadan dress was dressed upon you. And that's why at the end he testified, I'm not one Muslimin. Acknowledging that my Muhammadan dress is, is upon me. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, what is the meaning of heart vibration in night and what is the meaning of sudden pain in the heart? I didn't hear. Sayyidi, what is the meaning of heart vibration in night and what is the meaning of sudden pain in the heart? I don't know. That uh, again everything is a specific, it's not uh, what, what is this, what is that. But the heart is everything that we're talking about. So any type of vibration in the heart, the whole subject of all of this, this these teachings is about the qalb. So there's going to be all these frequencies and all these energies that are entering into the qalb and to the heart. So that's a given and if it's a majestic, it's a crushing. If it's jamali and beatific then it's an expansion. So all of these energies are continuously fluctuating within the heart of the servant. If Allah sending majestic tajalli, they feel a contraction like their heart and chest is, 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 is tight. And if it's jamali and beatific then they feel a, a great expansion within their chest and their, their heart region inshaAllah. So these are the, the ones related to tariqah and to sort of the, the spiritual practices and spiritual energies. But again it can also be many different uh, things. But related to spirituality, then these are related to the zikrs, the practices, the tajallis, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa In some circumstances, is it okay to respond with harsh words if Prophet is being insulted? In some circumstances is it okay to respond with harsh words when Prophet is being insulted? When the Prophet is being insulted Yeah definitely people don't want the Prophet to be insulted and these types of people to be avoided and their associations to be avoided. So. What, what can be done is to, to leave that type of environment so that we're not in, in that type of position. But to, to refrain in a peaceful way to say that it's not appreciated what, what is being said and taking oneself out of the environment and, and respectfully leaving. But to escalate something into anger and violence and that was then just the, you know for the benefit of shaitan that to cause a difficulty in a, in a family or in, a, in an environment. So relieving oneself or removing oneself from that environment 
and making a gracious comment, this was not acceptable, these things are not acceptable, this is not polite and I can no longer sit here. Then is a, is a stronger statement of good manners, good character and uh, inshaAllah everyone has to try their best. They may fail at first but inshaAllah Allah give them strength to have good character and uh, a protection to stay away from such people inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam This question is from a new person. Uh, what is the difference between people who follow the tariqah versus those who don't since both pray and both do amal? The difference between those who follow a spiritual guide and those who don't is the difference between being guided and not guided. So in life it, like everything else if you go to school and say that I just want to go to buy the books, I'm going to go home and I'm going to study it and I'm going to be a doctor. You enrolled in that uh, college, yes. You went and got the books, yes, but you went home to study. Now the likelihood of you studying everything and achieving what Allah wanted you to achieve is, is highly unlikely because of its complexity. So Allah required, Ittaqullah wa qunuma sadiqeen, have a consciousness and keep the company of truthful servants because our human nature is that we need a guide. There are people who say that you don't need a guide, well that person is the guide of misguiding people. So everyone has a comment, everyone is saying something, so somebody is going to appear as a guide for that person. So our life is about asking Ya Rabbi send me guidance, send me, send me to be guided to you so that I follow the deen according to Ahlul Sunnah wa Jama'ah and to the, according to the, to the love of Sayyidina Muhammad And if Allah accept that, as a as a acceptable du'a to that servant then alhamdulillah they're guided and Allah sends them then to the teachers of Islam, the reality of Islam and so that to teach them the soft way, the way of muhabbat and love and ishq. So everybody's going to be guided but it's the one whom asks for guidance and is enrolled within a school of guidance. So when they're not then imagine how they can fall prey to everyone else who wants to guide them. So we all came through that reality. When we first came to Islam and began to want to practice our religion, we went to the masjid. Everybody in the masjid was the guide. So you can't say that the, there's nobody guiding, oh I, I'm doing it myself. There is no one doing it themselves because they go in and they ask somebody, well how, how do we do this? Then all these people become guides for you. 99% of them incorrect, give you this, say like this, they like this and then you have all the different madhabs of imams. And in this day and age you may have a strong likelihood of connecting with one of the imams who come from a Wahhabi Salafi background. They have nothing to do with Salaf and the ways of the companions. But these are titles in which they give upon themselves and their belief system is harsh, their belief system is, is a, a aggressive and angry and the characteristics that they exhibit are that of anger and aggression. So they're not the beautific characteristics of Sayyidina Muhammad So the one whom has representation is represented and the one whom doesn't have representation, his representation is shaitan. Means somebody will jump in your life to fill that role and the danger is it could be anybody because the person doesn't know Islam. They could be being taught by somebody very aggressive, very angry, very incorrect and everything then becomes aggressive and angry and confrontational. They go back home and begin to confront everybody in their home. So that's, that's the danger, we've seen for 30 years of our life that level of danger for everyone because people will take advantage of someone who doesn't know what they're doing. But we pray, we pray, Ya Rabbi guide me please to the way of Islam, to the way of your satisfaction, to the way of the love of Sayyidina Muhammad 
Alhamdulillah Allah opens them guidance and we sit amongst the guides and the teachers and they teach us and we take a path of humility which Allah loves a path of humility in which to admit to ourselves we know nothing and when we know nothing we emptied our cup. As much as we can empty the cup Allah will fill the cup. But if we begin to take our path by ourselves and we start to fall in all sorts of different difficulties and, and traps inshaAllah. InshaAllah Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Izzat Amman Yasifoon Wa Salaamun Al Mursaleen Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Bi Hurmati Muhammad Al Mustafa Wa Bi Siri Surat Al Fatiha